Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new free motion quilting tutorial and today I'm stitching Itsy Bitsy Spider! <laughs> it is a very fun, very simple design and what I do first is stitch a circle and fill it full of thread. So I just circle around and around and around and then now I'm branching out with a little wiggly line and then travel stitching back to that center circle to form the spider legs. So you can add as many legs as you want. If you want to, you can be real picky about this and only have eight legs. Um, I, <laughs> I obviously have not been paying very good attention. I think that one might have 10. So really you can make it as, um, you know, biologically correct or as whimsical as you like. It's totally up to you. And then we're going to chain these together with some simple stippling. And this is just a wiggly line that doesn't cross itself. And I'm just wiggling up and around this shape. And notice that I'm kind of forming almost the same pattern. I dip down between those spider's legs, then come up and wobble around a little bit. Got a little bit of a tricky area here. So I'm just gonna try and form that as consistently as possible. If I have to, I will leave gaps in the design rather than stitch myself into an area, into a corner and not be able to get back out again. So here I'm gonna kind of dip down into the space and swirl around this leg. Just try and make it consistent with the rest of the stippling I've already stitched. But you know, if things have to get a little bit wider or a little bit further apart, that's okay. And then whenever you start looking at the design and feeling like you haven't stitched a spider in a little while, then we're gonna branch into one. So I just kind of stitch a little wiggly line and I make sure that I have a little bit of space all around it. Maybe these are about an one inch around. So I make sure I have one inch all around and then I stitch a circle and that can be a big circle. It can be a small circle. It's totally up to you. And then now I'm just gonna fill that with thread. So I'm just circling around and around and around now on a larger scale, that would take a little while and it would end up being very dense. So when I quilt this on a larger scale, I just fill that circle full of a spiral and that works great too. So now my circle is filled, I'm gonna branch out with some wiggly legs. And notice how as I branch out, I try and fill in that space. So that way I don't have a deep gap here in the design. I tried to fill all of that in. And then now I'll space those legs a little further apart. It really doesn't matter either way. I can stitch it either way with the legs further apart and fewer legs, or I can stitch them right on top of one another. I do find that when the legs are really close that the, it ends up starting to look almost like a sunshine. So that's a good alternative design. If you don't like the idea of stitching spiders on your quilt, then you could call this little sunshines and stitch little sunshines on your quilt instead. So there's more than one way of looking at this design if spiders really creep you out. <laughs> so, but I think it's really cool and it's certainly a fun design to play with now that we're going into the fall and of course Halloween and you might have a Halloween themed quilt and need a design to stitch on it. So I'm gonna continue filling around with stippling and let's say what happens if you need to cut a spider in half. So I'm gonna stitch just a really small body right here and I'm gonna branch out with legs only in one direction. So just up and out all around. And that looks pretty good to me. And you know, that's another thing is you don't have to come back out the way that you came in. So I'm gonna branch out this way and go back into my stippling design. And since I'm right up here in this corner, I'm gonna go on ahead and fill that in completely. But notice how as I do that, I run the risk of leaving gaps all in this area. So what am I gonna do? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way in that space in a row, so see how I'm kind of wiggling down in a row in a downwards direction. I'm gonna quilt through this space, filling it in completely. So I'm gonna dip down, come back out. Now interlock the stippling with the stippling from before. And so as I'm filling in an upward direction, I'm making sure I'm consistently filling that in and I haven't left any gaps in the design. So it does take a little bit of practice to be able to do that fluidly. If you have to, grab a marking pencil, mark it, 
it's not cheating and it certainly will help you escape from a tricky area or you know think through a tricky area like that where you know if I had kind of stitched in the wrong direction or filled things a little differently I might have ended up either stuck in a place or accidentally leaving a really big space open. So either way, it doesn't matter. You can always break thread and keep on quilting in another direction. And here's what it looks like whenever you finish Itsy Bitsy Spider. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed learning this new design with me today. Definitely check out my website at leahday.com to find tools, materials, and books that I've written about free motion quilting on your home machine. Check it out at leahday.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.